Hello and welcome back to All Things Crafty, my crochet corner, and I'm Lavette. And today's crochet with me, we'll be making a Christmas stocking. And I'm going to use this woolly stick and quick um, in a all ivory color. It's super bulky, um, number six. And for the top, I'm going to be using this Go Fox fur that I have. Um, for the top of it and I will show some ones that are already completed so you'll see what it, the finished product should look like so this one is um this one was done in red super saver and in the top I used just velvet burnett velvet and then I have one where I use the Go Fox fur in a light pink color, and then it's a red sparkly color, and then this one try to come out so you can see. This one was a black super saver with the gray. This is the same color as what I'm using. And then I have one in all pink, same, this one's slightly smaller. And then lastly, I have a light blue, it's hard to tell, but this is light blue fo fox fur and a blue number, I think I used two strands of number four worsted weight to do all of these actually i use two strands of a number four weight yarn um because the pattern calls for a six so that is what they should come out what it should come out like and um stay tuned we'll get right into our stocking and our crime true crime story time see you in a bit everybody let's jump into our case hope you have your beverage and your snack and your work in progress and this is going to be about the murder of Lisa Solomon um, so Lisa that occurred on Christmas Eve I'm not sure of the year in Long Island New York so um, Lisa's husband Matthew called um, the police on Christmas morning to report his wife missing and his story was that it was their two-month wedding anniversary. They had been married for two months, um, and he had proposed on Christmas Eve the year before. So it was a um, big anniversary that they were celebrating, and they were going to have, they had a big lobster dinner that night, and, you know, they were celebrating. And they... He, they sat on the couch after dinner to watch a TV show, and he fell asleep, and she got woke him up upset that he had fallen asleep on their big romantic night. And so he then um, stated that an argument, um, an argument happened over that, and she just said she wanted to leave and go take a walk. So um, she left, and he went back to the couch and fell asleep, and... Woke up three hours later, and his wife wasn't there. So, he he got dr got dressed, went out f to look for her on foot, walking around the neighborhood. And he flagged down a police officer who said that, um, you know, who, and he asked him, did he see anybody walking? And, and, the co and the police officer said no. So, he continued to walk and search and came home and called the police in the morning. Um... So, they searched for days for her. The husband, Matthew, was doing many police news, I'm sorry, many news conferences, um, news television shows, pleading for her safe return. Um, he had organized search parties with his family along with the police, and they searched um, everywhere, and 
six days later, on December 30th, um, one of Lisa's cousins from the search party had found in the park um, a bunch of garbage bags with leaves in them, and he went to kick one of the bags and found it to be hard. And he opened it, saw a arm and a leg that were frozen, and so he continued to look to see if it was her and turned out to be her. So... The police were called, Matthew was called, and he came to the scene so hysterical that he had to be restrained and then he had to be hospitalized and sedated because of his hysteria. So they examined the body, they found that um, she was strangled and there were two red carpet fibers found mixed, you know, um, amongst the garbage bag ties so um that was part of their forensic evidence so now they turned from a missing person search to a murder investigation so they looked into the marriage of course and all of the family reported that they were a loving couple um they spoke with the downstairs neighbors who was also the landlord and they stated that they heard an argument the night before Christmas Eve around 11 to 12 but they had known about that so they weren't really concerned about that and then they learned from Lisa's um job that she worked as a loan officer for a bank and um Lisa had complained to several co-workers that there was a man named Rob um that had applied for a car loan and um and then he continued to call her periodically asking her out and it kind of started to bother her a little but nothing she was really worried about so now the police wants to find this rob guy um they actually talked about him on the news for this person to come forward um the husband also did the same urging rob to please come forward um they looked through all her records. They couldn't find any loan office loan um, applications in that name. And then they decided to dig date deeper and look further back. And they were able to find a Robert um, as a client of hers. So they contacted him and asked him, you know, met up with him and asked him why he, you know, he admitted to trying to ask her out. And they asked him, you know why would you see all this news coverage and not come forward and he stated that he only knew her in her maiden name as weaver and he had never seen her he only spoke over the phone so he didn't know what she looked like so she didn't he didn't tie the two together so rob had an alibi for that night of christmas eve he was with family that was confirmed so he was no longer a suspect so then they had to turn back to matthew and they did a more detailed house and car search and in the trunk of the car they found a red carpet um, and they took that sample of that carpet matched the fibers to the ones found on the garbage bag and then they knew you know something was up her body had been in that in that trunk so they um so they found surveillance video they talked to Matthew and they found surveillance video of him buying garbage bags that night at the local convenience store he told the story of you know the fight that happened with him and Lisa that night was you know because he fell asleep and he woke up and she wanted to go for a walk and he and because she she was drinking she was a little bit feisty and he was trying to keep her in and not go out in the freezing cold in the dark at, alone so he was he just said that he put his arm around her and was trying to subdue her and then she, he accidentally choked her and she died and so the defense's claim was it was an accident he was just trying to calm her down while the um prosecution's case um their expert said that he had to put at least 30 minutes, 33 minutes, sorry, three minutes of pressure on her, um, in a headlock on her neck to cause the damage that he did. Um, so the jury deliberated and on November 18th of 1988, he was found guilty of, um, of murder. And while the defense was trying to get manslaughter with the accidental deaths claim, but 
it was he was found guilty of murder, which he is still serving in New York now. Um, so he claimed that you know he was just trying to subdue her, but he didn't have any intention of killing her. But the prosecution believed it was second degree murder. It happened in the heat of the moment. He didn't plan to kill her, premeditated, but at the time that he strangled her, his intention was to kill her. So, um, that was, again, this case was, um, this case was from a show called In Plain Sight. It's available on Hulu. Um, has a lot of nice cases if anyone is interested. And thank you for checking out this crime portion of our Crime and Crochet. Now let's get back to the stocking and see how it turned out. This is the finished product. Sometimes I make this a little thicker. Sometimes I fold it down. Sometimes I'll leave it up. It it kind of depends. Um, this one I think I'll just leave up, leave like that. And hang with the rest. Alright, hope you enjoyed today's crime and crochet. I'll see you the next time.